Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, I pray that as those that we, we lift up each week, the other fellowships round about us, Lord, in their weakness, our, our dear brothers and sisters at Holy Trinity Lutheran that need a pastor, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for Grace Community, Pastor Bruce Campbell retiring soon. They would, you would bring the right man to fill his shoes that would help that body continue to grow and be a, a light in our community. And Lord, let us receive today what we need, that we could be lights for you. Lord, we'd be lamps that would shine brightly, your light from inside our, our beings, Lord. Our vessels would just be filled with the things from your spirit that we need today. And we ask that you do that for each person here now. In Jesus' name, as we look to your holy scripture, speak to us. Lord, speak through me despite me, Lord, I pray. In Christ's name, I pray. And everyone that agreed with me said? Amen. Amen. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We get to pick up where we left off in Verse 6 um, and 7 was where we ended last week, and I'm just going to read them to you so you can, you know, continue it, the thought. Well, uh, Paul is a master builder of teaching, you know, a, a, a truth and then saying, now, if this is true, then what does that implicate? What, what, therefore, then we can, we can assume this. If this is to be true of the Lord, then this helps us to understand something further. And... I like that kind of, I don't know about you, but it's very logical. It's a very step-by-step -step approach of helping you to learn the precepts of our faith and that, the, and that, you know, to build on them, not just to learn them, but like to help us grow step-by-step. -step. I don't know about you, but I didn't start off getting all this stuff. So if you feel like I don't get it, don't worry. You're in a good club. You know, even the apostles didn't get it and they were with Jesus. So, so cut yourself a little slack, leave room for, you know, improvement and us to grow together we're all grow we're all works in progress here so we can grow in this but today we pick up what paul had paul had had, had ended actually at verse five saying he was not preaching himself as lord not at all he was saying instead we're just your bond slaves but it's christ jesus who's our lord our master that's the one we we want everyone to f to follow his lead not us you know, as men, we're not qualified to be the Lord over another man. Only God himself can do the job. So, so Paul says, that's what we preach. And he said in verse 6, And God, he says, has, who said, Light shall shine out in the darkness, is the one that has shown in our hearts to give us light, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. He has given us this light from the Lord. It's, a, it's like a, a illuminates our whole understanding when we look into the face of what, uh, Jesus. What did, what did Jesus do for us? I mean, he paid for our sins. And he didn't expect any, he didn't say, when you get it together and you start going to church, then I'm going to forgive you. No. He said, I love you and I forgive you right where you're at. In fact, I love you so much, I'm not going to leave you where you're at because you're kind of in a, you know, some of us were in a hole, so to speak, spiritually in life. We f went down in the quicksand of the quagmire of life. And he goes, I, I love you too much. I'll leave you stuck there. Let me pull you out of that. And he brings us out of those pl pits that we get ourselves in. And he, and he gets us on the right path. And he gets us going. And so when we look at his glory, the glory of God in the face of his son, he says that that causes a light to shine in us. We're vessels. Now, I hope this challenged you. I, I mentioned last week, how many of you, by show of hands again, how many of you had someone come up to you and say, wow, you have such a glow, or you have like a light. There's something, ab there's something about the way you are, you know, I can just see that there's something special in your being. They have new age terms. They call it like, it, right, Jen? They, they say, um, your aura is very shiny. <laughs> you're, you're so shiny, you know. You must have, and you, and you know, you know inwardly what it is. It's the Lord that shines in us. That, and hopefully you have experienced this. If you haven't yet, I'm going to give you some more tips today 
we really want that to take place in our lives because people should see that light of the Lord in us. But the way that the light gets to shine, it, I used the example of those, remember the old oil lamps or the kerosene lamps where you had the little wick and you turned it up and you lit it and, and you know, you get the wick just right and it gets that nice bluish yellow light just perfect and shines real bright. You get it too high, you, you know what happens, right? The kids don't know what I'm talking about, so you've got to help them out. But if you turn the wick up too tall, because you think, oh, I'll make it taller, I'll make more light. What happens to the, to the wick as it's up there burning high? It starts giving off that black, wispy stuff, that, that soot starts covering the glass inside. And pretty soon, <laughs> it doesn't matter how bright you got the light inside, because if you soot up the whole glass, the light doesn't come out. And the, the man who taught me this, was my youth leader many years ago, Bill Lelander, and he said, you know, guys, we are all, we are all the, the lamps for God's light to be in us. But if our glass is, is dirty, it's all sooted up, we have sin that has sooted up our glass, it doesn't matter how bright Christ be in us, it, it doesn't shine out. So he says, if you really want to shine for the Lord, just ask the Lord to forgive you and cleanse you. He was teaching us First John. Remember in 1 John what is it for? He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And what's that other part? And do what? Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If you want to shine for the Lord, just go to the Lord and say, Lord, clean up my lamp. You know, clean my glass up. Make me clean. And you, and you, you know, he already is bright. If he abides in your heart, don't worry. All you got to do is clean up your glass. And people will go, wow. What a light. What a glow. you got like a golden aura, man. You just shine. for, And you go, that's the Lord. Okay? Now, Paul is going to go on to describe something that if you know anything about the Apostle Paul, he was a man that was actually called Saul of Tarsus before he was converted by the Lord. And did, can anyone recall what was Saul doing before his conversion? Something... He was killing Christians. He had a letter from the high priest, gave him authority to imprison Christians, to have them beaten. He was he was like, he he was a absolute persecutor of the faith. And one day on the road, the Lord came and and he was he was persecuting the Christians. And Jesus appeared. It says, brighter than the sun at high noon. And said, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecute me? Now he had a quick comeback. He said, um, who art thou, Lord, that I might serve thee? He said, I'm Jesus. But see, this is Jesus resurrected. He's already in heaven. And he appears to Saul and says, you know, you've caused much trouble. And, and we're told that for the next three days, now the men that were with Saul that day, they, they didn't see it, but they heard it this voice and they were they were freaked out and Saul had to be led by the hand he was blinded by the light it was so bright the light of the Lord blinded him and they took him into town it says for the next three days the Lord showed him all that he was going to suffer <laughs> introducing him to his newfound faith who art thou Lord that I could serve thee I'm Jesus and you're going to suffer buddy now you think that that's a bad thing but how much suffering had this guy caused in the body of Christ. I mean, he had had, he had had many Christians in prison, beaten, killed. And Jesus said, I'm going to... Now, I, I, being raised Sicilian, wouldn't have thought of this as a solution. If somebody was persecuting my family, and they were hurting anyway, you touch one of my kids and see how nice I become. You know, you, you, you'll find out I'm still human. And it's not good to do that. You know, that's... that I was raised... you you jealously watch over your family. Well, Jesus goes, why are you picking on my family? Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecuted me? But Jesus was already in heaven. Who was Saul picking on? The believers down here. Jesus took issue with that. He's like, you picked on my family, you picked a fight with me. Let me take care of you, buddy. And if you don't think Jesus can fight a battle for himself, don't worry. He, sm he smote that guy right there on the spot with blindness. Had to lead him by the hand into the city. And for the next three days, the Lord said, this is what you're going to suffer. Now, who can tell me, did Saul, who 
then had that name changed by the Lord to Paul. He said, no more Saul. Saul in Hebrew means desirable. It's the male version of handsome. Uh, G- we, we would say GQ, you know, on the GQ magazine. That's what Saul in Hebrew means. It's that tall, handsome, desirable look, you know. I mean, if you had that name, come on, think of this, guys. How about you get named Saul? Your whole life you're called desirable. You know, the male version of hot. That's your name. What's your name? Hot. Yeah, GQ. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I've got it going, you know. I mean, that's what Saul meant. And I think Saul had, you know, it's funny how names have an impact on the people, you know, when they grow up with that name. Jesus goes, so we're not going to call you that anymore. We're going to change your name from Saul to Paul. Who can tell me what Paul means in Hebrew? Little. (laughs) You're too full of yourself, buddy. We're going to call you little. Little one. Switch this Saul thing to Paul. And you'll be a little one, and I'm going to use you, little one, but you're going to suffer for my name's sake. Now, did Saul suffer for the, for, for the sake of the gospel? Five times he received from the Jews 39 lashes, 40 saved one, it's called, beaten within one stripe of death. He was stoned to death. He was shipwrecked, spent a night and a day in the deep. He said he's, he, he suffered imprisonments, rejections. He was... This guy went through a lot, a lot of stuff for his faith. Now, I know this is not popular. Trent, is this popular teaching in American Christianity? Join up with Jesus and you're going to suffer. I mean, if you teach that in American Christianity, they all run. We've got to find a pastor who preaches more happy messages. But, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of guys teaching, join up with Jesus and you won't have any problems. And I'm going to tell you, those guys are false teachers. They do not adhere to what the scripture teaches. They don't even adhere to what Jesus taught. Jesus said, in this world, in John chapter 40, in this world you shall have what? Happy times. Great, easy goings. It's all going to be smooth sailing. Right? That's what Jesus said? No, he said, in this world you'll have tribulations. But be of good cheer, he says, I have overcome the world. See, the source is him. He's the one who overcome all of this stuff down here. And so Paul went through all these beatings, and by the time he's writing to the church here, the letter of 2 Corinthians, he's, he's already had three missionary journeys under his belt. He, he's pastored works. He's seen people introduced to the faith. He's seen some people shipwrecked in their faith that started off well. He's seen some go on and do well in the faith. And I don't think he pulls any punches. He actually explains that sometimes in this life, we go through hardships. Even our bodies go through crummy stuff. And i got to be really honest. I'm glad this is included in the Bible because if I listen to the doctrines being taught in some of the American churches today, I I would think I must be not uh, saved, I guess, because they say that, you know, sign up with Jesus and all is wonderful and there's never a problem and it's all smooth sailing and... And I, I've been serving him for, since I was 16 years old. We turn 55 next month, so do the math. Almost four decades. And I can't tell you that it's been smooth sailing for those four decades. I can't tell you that it's been easy. But I can tell you the Lord has never abandoned me. He's never forsaken me. He's never left me in any of the hardest times of my life. He's always been right there with me. Like the psalmist, David wrote, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. You know, one of the things I can teach you is the Lord is with you no matter how hard it is, no matter how hard the troubles you're going through, no matter how bad things get on on the outward for your body. Maybe you got, you know, afflictions in your body. Maybe you're suffering from, from illnesses. Let me tell you, Paul has an insight if you can receive it, in this chapter that I think American Christianity as a whole has ignored. But I'm sad they have because there's, there's a great source of power when you, when you grasp this truth, when you begin to realize what Paul is going to end this chapter with, you will see 
this is one of the most powerful things for Christians to, to actually grasp. If you, can, if you can just lay hold of this. Let me read it to you and, and just take a moment to let it sink in. See if it makes sense to you. Paul says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We're the, we're the earthen vessels. So that the surpassing greatness of the power will be of who? Of God. Not from ourselves. Now, we went over this last week. The source of power is not me. The source of power is God in me. And we have this, he says, as a treasure. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. But let's continue with this. He says, and we are afflicted. What? We're supposed to be at peace and smooth sailing. But he says here in verse 8, we are afflicted in every way but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not despairing. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. Was Paul ever persecuted? You guys that studied scripture, did that guy ever go through persecutions? Oh man, did he ever. He said, we are struck down, but we're not destroyed. We are always carrying about in our bodies the dying of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Now, Paul is onto something here that isn't like in the forefront of popular Christian teaching today. But listen to this. He says, for we who live are constantly being delivered over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death works in us, but life in you. But having the same spirit of faith, according to what was written, he said, I believed, he's quoting, by the way, from Psalm 116, verse 10, I believe, therefore I spoke. And Paul says, and we also believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, so that the grace which is spreading to more and more people may cause the giving of thanks to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, of course, Paul has got to build on that. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. The momentary, he says, light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. And we, while we look not at the things which are seen, but we look at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know, all the stuff we see, physical, material stuff, around, this is all going to pass away. The stuff Paul is trying to point out is those things in the unseen world, the things of the spiritual realm, the things that you have a spirit inside you that is designed by God to live forever. Do you, you know that, right? Inside of you, there's that part of your being God has placed in you that is designed for everlasting life. But he wants that everlasting life to be with him. The devil, he's got a different plan for man. He wants, misery loves company. He wants everyone to go to hell with him. But hell was never made for man. You can read it in the Gospel of Matthew. It says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, the ones that rebelled with him. It was never made for man. When some people say, well, yeah, we're just going to go to hell and party hardy. I said, no, you're not. They don't even have beverages there. <laughs> There's nothing to drink. It's not going to be a party. Wake up. There's an eternal lake of fire. Don't get fooled. The, Satan would try to deceive you that somehow it's going to be a fun time. It will not be fun. When you are constantly in torment from flames licking you and there is nothing to quench that flame and there's nothing to put out that parched throat of yours, you are not going to be having fun. You do not want to go to hell. It wasn't, by the way, men will not do hell well. We're not made for it. So don't fall for the devil's lies. He just, he knows where he's going to go. In fact, Jesus even reminded that, I, I, I think, well, even this story, remember the story when Jesus crossed over the Sea of Galilee? And he came to that far shore and uh, into the city where uh, Decapolis uh, is the, in Deca means ten and Polis is cities, ten cities. On the other side of the Sea of Galilee, there's the, a region of ten cities. And there was a guy out in the, 
in the tombs gashing himself and beating himself and he had he had over a thousand demons and jesus when he met the guy he he said um what's your name he said legion for we are many and they and the demons cried out what do we have to do with you O son of the most high have you come to do what what, what did those demons they knew what was coming have you come to cast us into the pit before our time do they know there's a time they're going to go get cast in the pit? Sure. They're partying hardy while they can, but they know what their demise is. And they go, don't do it, don't do it. Can we go into the pigs instead? You guys know the story, right? They go into the pigs, which, by the way, some are like, how mean of Jesus to cast them into the pigs and the pigs, because, you know, the pigs, they ran over the cliff and went into the sea and drown it's really steep right there i've been there in israel they just went straight in and drowned in the sea and <laughs> so that that was mean of jesus to kill all those pigs uh, i forget to some people don't know jewish etiquette of eating but are jews allowed to eat pork is it on the clean list or the unclean list it's on the unclean they're not even supposed to have bacon or pork chops or none of that you know sorry it's not in their, in their, God gave them some outlines. They weren't supposed to be, what were they doing raising pigs anyway? I mean, they weren't supposed to be doing that. See, so Jesus didn't get rid of anything that was good for them. There was, they had trichinosis in those pigs. You know, Jesus was just protecting them. People, when they say this stuff, I think, you're just really not paying attention to some details here. But Paul says, all of this stuff, he's, Jesus, Jesus did these things for his light to be shown. And the, the guy who Jesus cast the demons out, he said, can I follow you? He said, no, just go tell what good things God has done for you. Go back to your hometown. Do you guys know that we have no record of any of the apostles going that direction? It would be um, toward the area today of what's Syria. You guys know where Syria is? The guys, the big enemies of Israel, always trying to nuke them. Jesus doesn't even let the man follow him. He says, just go tell what good things God has done for you. And guys, I can tell you, I have been on, the, on that side of the Sea of Galilee. And I have stood in the remains of a church that was built 300 years later that has little mosaic tiles about this big into this beautiful mosaic picture of the whole reenactment of that man's deliverance from the demons and Jesus. And it's all pictorial. And it was the floor of their church, built 300 years later. And none of the apostles went and preached the gospel, but that man went and shared what God did for him, setting him free. And it had such an impact that 300 years later, they had a church on the sea, on the side of the Sea of Galilee, uh, overlooking the cliffs, that has that to this day. Those remains are right there. And I tell you, even the, I mean, we, Years ago, we built this rock wall for because there used to be boulders there, and guys used to roll them and come out here and mess up the thing. So I asked, can I build a rock wall? That was a big undertaking behind you right there. took a while. But they used rocks on that little church that I marveled at. I mean, they used boulders that were like 8 feet long, 10 feet high, about, about 12 feet wide. I'm like, how did they get these suckers into place? I mean, we... They didn't have cranes. They didn't have, like, you know, D9s or any. Uh, they did that all. Somehow they rolled those, and they had them all stacked. And those are the walls of the back of the church that still stay in place to this day. I was like, that is the coolest thing. But it was all because God touched a man and delivered him and showed his mercy to him. And that man let Jesus into his heart. He let that forgiveness count for him, and he shined so much that three centuries later, they built a mosaic to commemorate that deliverance. Now, somebody say, how powerful is your testimony, Trent? When you share your testimony, is it going to have any effect? I hope that 300 years from now, if the Lord would tarry, someone would be going, let's remember when God did that for that guy. What he did, that marvelous testimony of what God... That's what... That's what a whole group of people built that church. I couldn't get enough volunteers to build that rock wall. And they got guys to build this massive church to commemorate a deliverance 
from the Lord. I tell you that we have taken our eyes off the most important thing. The power of God to deliver a person from whatever circumstance they're in, that's what we got to remind people of. We have a God that has power to deliver. You can have demons. You can have afflictions. You can have sickness. I serve a God big enough to take care of all those things. And, and if one man's testimony could be so great that it would carry on for 300 years, and then they build that church to commemorate that great deliverance that Jesus did, then I suggest to you, maybe we need to point out Jesus' power to deliver more often. Maybe we should get that back as the focus. We should get the glory of the face of Christ and the power that is in God as the focus of the things. Because the stuff that goes on to down here to us, Paul says, our bodies are, well, what did he say? Though our outer man is decaying. Now, you young ones are probably not thinking your outer man is decaying. But give it a few years, you'll find out. Joints start to creak and stuff starts to crackle. And you pretty much figure out as you get older, this, uh, the right, this body is decaying. And mine's just rapidly, more rapidly, it seems the older I get, it's speeding up the decay. I don't like it. I went into the doctor's office with my wife this week and they, they, she was having a little flutter of her heart, so they put this little thing on her that she's got to wear, and it reports, and she's got to touch it and push the button, and every time it feels like her heart's fluttering and let them know, and weird stuff. And I'm sitting there, and the doctor looks over at me, and, and I've known him for years. I mean, I knew him when he was a physician's assistant. He, he looks at me and goes, wow, you're getting gray hair. <laughs> oh, you're really old, Pastor. Thanks, Darren. Nice to see you, too, you know. At least I still have some here. I'm rejoicing they're still there. You know? But, but the reality is, this thing is decaying. Now, young ones are thinking, nah, it'll never happen to me. Just give it time. How many can give an amen? The outer man is decaying, but the inner man is being what? Renewed day by day. We need to, we need to focus on the renewal that God is doing on the inside. You know, people have enough problems down here. What they need is the good news that there's a God that can help us by renewing us inside. Day by day, daily, He is working in us a renewing, a renewing of our inner man. Now, Paul says on the outside, oh, it's not been easy. I've been crushed. I've been, I've been afflicted. I've been persecuted. I've been struck down. But notice what he said. In every way, though he was afflicted, he, I'm sorry, he was not crushed. He was perplexed, but he was not despairing. And he was persecuted, but he was not forsaken. You know, the good Lord never forsakes us in all of this stuff. We go through hard times, and the Lord says, I'm there for you. Don't worry. Don't worry, Jen. The Lord's with you. He's never going to forsake you, ever. Though you walk through the hardest time, the good Lord will be there with you. Don't ever forget that. He never, she said, I'll never leave you. I'll never what? Forsake you. Though to the ends of the age, he says, I will be with you. Why don't they preach that very much anymore? Trent, you, you've been all around the United States, right, the last couple of years. Is that being heralded in the churches at all? Because he has a more experience with this than I do. He's been on the road in the RV visiting and leading worship at different churches all around the United States. And I, it grieves my heart. This is, I'm not making this up, guys. I didn't go, let me find some fanciful message to preach to you. I, I'm going to really take a big stretch here and try to find some. No, this is right here in the book. Some people say, why are you so big about this book? It says because the Holy Scriptures bring encouragement to our heart. I don't know about you, but I need all the encouragement I can get. What's the, what's the author of Hebrews say in chapter 3? Verse 13, he says, Encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called what? Today. Let me check. Hmm, today. Still called today, right? So I got to encourage you. Sorry, Mike. Got to encourage you today. Now, when we get to tomorrow, tomorrow will be called today. So 
Guess got to encourage you too. It says encourage one another, right? Day after day, as long as it's still, you know, that's a, just a trick way of saying you got to do this every day. There's no getting out of it. But we really don't have a society that tries to encourage others daily. But this book does. So why are you so big? Because this is the one that gives me encouragement every day, day after day after day. And those stuff, and my body is going wrong, those stuff is just, you know, outwardly cares of this life, tribulations. I know what Jesus said. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. And boy, I tell you, that's a great comfort to my heart. That's a comfort that I want to make sure all the other believers get to hear about. And if, if you don't mind, I know this is a, a, a strange thing to ask, but when the kids, they, they film this and they put it on YouTube, when it pops up, would you mind share it to the ones you know need that word of encouragement? Maybe their bodies is they're going through fighting cancer or they're having troubles with their body. They need to know that the Lord is there. And even if their outer man is decaying, God will renew their inner man. We need, we need that comfort. There's no one escapes this, this decaying of the flesh. Sorry, it just happens. It's like built in. But don't worry, next week, <laughs> next week I get to continue. You know, Paul is going to go, therefore, if this is true, well, you just read the first, the first part of chapter 5 and you will find out where he's going with this. Because he's going to tell you. If this body gets torn down, this earthly tent, he calls it, I'm just giving you the preview so you know if you want to read ahead. If this earthly tent gets torn down, what, is we, what does he say we have waiting for us? In the heavens, a mansion. I love this. We're upgrading this spirit of mine is going to move out of this earthly tent and into a heavenly body made by God. Eternal, it says in the heavens. And that body, just to compare the two, Paul says, this one's a tent, that one's a mansion. You're talking upgrade of the greatest magnitude. We have something so much to look forward to. Now, if you have a friend who doesn't know about the Lord and the good stuff that lies ahead, get him to come next week. I know I don't like, tr I'm not a good self-promoter. I, I kind of suck at it, but I'm trying to get better. I'm not really trying to promote myself, to be honest. I want to promote the gospel, okay? But this part next week really helps shift our, we get, we get in a trap of thinking of everything day to day to day, finite thinking, and we forget the infinite. We forget the long term. What God has... An eternity waiting for us. An, a, an everlasting body. Incorruptible. Immortal. You get an upgrade. You're, how much pain will there be in that new body? None. Anyone up for that? <laughs> just, just us two, right? And these. But yeah, I could get a few. Funny how the hands fly up for that. Who wants a new body from the Lord? You, you, whoa. Everybody's here. Yeah. And. I know I'm going to be much better looking in that one. <laughs> you guys will be like, Pastor, is that you? And they're like, are you sure? I'm going to be like, more muscles and, you know, scoot over Schwarzenegger. They'd be like, you know. You have to look the same. Had to look the same? No, <laughs> I'm not even worried. I'll just reintroduce myself. Hi, I'm Pastor Is. Look better, don't I? No more gray hair, whatever. I don't know. All, I just want all of them to stay. Stay, you guys. Quit falling out. A jumping ship. Guys, we have such great words of encouragement. Next week, re do, do me a favor. Read ahead to chapter 5. If it's a very, for me, it's a very personal chapter because it's the chapter my grandmother had me read over and over to my grandfather on his deathbed. So I'll... I'll point out why it's so special to me next week and uh, I think it'll really encourage your faith if, if you need a Bible we've got extras here from the Gideons they blessed us um, well actually Anita got us those from the from the Habitat when when they brought some to the Habitat for Humanity um, we were able to get some of the Gideon Bibles from the hotel that they were re 
redecorating or something, revamping. So, so we have Bibles if you need. And turn to 2 Corinthians 5, read that chapter, and just let it sink in of what God has that is waiting ahead for us. And if you have any friend who they really haven't had maybe a good experience with the gospel or they haven't heard the good news, bring them next week. I think really this is a great way to introduce them is to show them what God has that lies ahead for us so that they get the, the hope of, you know, the things. What, I mean, some of you grew up with this. You knew this your whole life. You went to Sunday school. You're like, oh, yeah, we're getting new bodies. Oh, yeah, we're no more pain, no more sorrow. Oh, yeah, none of that. You know, like it's all given for you. But you're going to find a lot of your friends might not even know this. They didn't grow up knowing this. On this island, there's a lot of Buddhists that they have not even ever heard any of this. So please invite them next week. If you wouldn't mind, I'd just like to share this with as many people as possible. To plant that seed of encouragement in their hearts. And, and, and let it grow. To help strengthen them. So that's what I have for you today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the wonderful encouragement that your script scriptures bring to us. I pray as we go from here, you would just let these truths just be buried into us, Lord, that we could carry them forward through this week. Lord, if any of us, I know will, <laughs> I'm certain some of us will face some trials and tribulations, but we, will, we pray that we would have Paul's attitude, that you'll be there with us, no matter what we're, we're facing, Lord, you will get us through those things. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for your holy scriptures. Thank you for the brothers and sisters round about us that we can that we can just receive that touch of your love and mercy from one another in this place. Pray that your spirit would now continue to water these seeds that have been planted and, and continue growing of the seeds that have already been implanted, Lord, in us, that we could all grow and shine more. Cleanse our, our glass, Lord. Wash us all clean that we could shine bright for you this week. And I ask that in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said... Amen. Would you Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.